If you are secretly homophobic, just say that. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Deshaun King. Today we're gonna be doing a life update. I'm gonna be telling you guys what's been going on with me lately, as well as answering a couple of the questions that you guys sent me over on Instagram. No soon I'm going to get my own Instagram account because Instagram is I asked you guys to send me over some personal questions to ask me for my life update video as well as some dating and relationship advice questions. So we're gonna be getting into a couple of those as well. So if you're interested in that, just continue watching. Before we get into the video, make sure you guys like this video, subscribe to my channel, and turn on my post notifications so you can be notified of all my future videos. I wanna thank you guys for getting me past 500 subscribers. Our next goal is 600, so if you can help me out with that, I would really appreciate it. Let me take my AirPods out, first of all. I, I've become so accustomed to these things. Okay. So I'm gonna open up some of the questions that you guys sent me over on Instagram. You know, it's actually kind of been a minute since I actually posted that on my story. I actually posted two things on my story. I posted you guys asking me relationship advice and then I posted, you know, to ask me personal questions for my life update video. But uh, yeah, so we're just gonna get right into it. I'm gonna cleanse my face with the Keys Soul Care Cleanser. I'm actually filming a review for Keys Soul Care that will probably be posted next week. So I've been testing out uh, some of their products for the past few weeks actually and so far I'm really loving like what I've been trying especially this cleanser this is actually like one of my new favorite cleansers right now it actually leaves my skin feeling very soft and supple almost as if like I just got a facial almost like it, it gives like a very like spa like finish on my skin which I really like especially for nighttime but I use it for both daytime and nighttime so I'm just gonna go to my bathroom wet my face and come back and cleanse my face so we can get right into the questions okay so I wet my face and I'm just gonna pump this cleanser in I like to do three pumps of this cleanser just to get like a nice big lather I need to get my brows threaded but I'll probably get my brows started before my trip I have so much to update you guys on a lot has happened and a lot is going to happen. And I'm really excited to talk about some of the stuff. And I'm also like pretty anxious to just get a lot of things off my chest. It's been a while since I've actually had like a sit down video talking about personal things with you guys. But first things first, I did wanna talk about where I am with my channel right now and just how I feel about where I'm going with my channel, how I feel like I've done so far. To be quite honest, like, Here's the gig, right? So I've been on YouTube so far for eight months and so far I've had really, really, really great engagement. If you guys look at like the top five or six videos in my popular uploads playlist, my views are in the thousands and I'm really proud about that. And I only have you guys to thank for that. So far I'm like halfway to 600 subscribers right now. So I'm really excited about that. Honestly, like I've been getting a lot of questions on, ooh, like you're gonna get monetized soon enough. You're gonna get monetized soon, soon. I just wanna just, reiterate even though youtube is my goal and you know i do see myself doing that full time being monetized like as quickly as possible is not a goal of mine of course like i want to achieve things that i don't expect myself to achieve so like i just want to have good engagement and good impact to my viewers I'm not necessarily trying to like rush to the finish line so that I can start making money from YouTube. Making money is not reason number one why I made my channel. It's just simply not. Like, there's so many reasons as to why I'm doing this. Let's see, I do have some notes in front of me too, aside from the questions that you guys asked me because I did want to talk about just some personal things that have happened in my life. So both of my parents are actually getting married damn near at the same exact time. And it's just, it's so funny to me because it's like my mom is definitely the type of person that like she was never really like out here dating. If you guys don't know like about my upbringing stuff, so my mom's actually a Jehovah's Witness. Familiar with the Jehovah's Witness religion? If you're not, I'll link above and in the description below my chit chat get unready with me when I talk about growing up as a Jehovah's Witness. It's a completely, completely different like lifestyle than the average person. My future stepdad, he's actually a really nice person. I've never met him in person because of you know, the pandemic. My mom's taking everything very seriously. I actually met him through Zoom and he's a really nice person. He has a good job. Listen, like as a son to a single parent, an only son to a single parent, it was really important to her that like I approved of this man. And I do. I feel like we, we see each other. We see each other. We see each other. My dad, on the other hand, he's, 
He's dated so many, oh my gosh. Ah, skeet, 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 skeet. Ah, this is why I don't really talk about my family. I wasn't sure who he was gonna wife up. You know, his fiance. I don't really look at her as a stepmom. I look at her as kind of like another sister, if that makes sense. We're very cordial, you know, we, we joke, you know. It's not really like a traditional stepmom kind of relationship. If if there's even a traditional stepmom relationship, I, I don't even really know. But here's the gag, right? My mom announced her engagement to me privately. And then I kid you not, one one week later, my dad gets engaged. I was, I was just, I was like, what is going on? Like, what is going on? I never expected myself to like be in a position where like, I feel like I'm splitting time between the two. It's just a lot going on all at once. It's just so odd, like just seeing both of my parents move on at the same exact time. And speaking of moving on, I am ready to move on from Florida. I'm not gonna speak on this too much, but I do have plans on relocating. I'm looking at Atlanta right now. You know, within a year, I'm hoping to, you know, have my own place. I don't wanna have a roommate. I don't function well living with other people. So I wanna have my own place by next year. I'm manifesting that. I'm actually gonna be going to Atlanta in June to visit for a week. That would be like my second official time in Atlanta, but this will be like my first time actually like experiencing it in full because when I went the first time, I was only there for like a couple days. If I'm gonna be living there, I really need to get a feel of the environment. That is like my plans and I don't wanna speak on anything further. But yeah, so I'm really excited about that. Am I nervous? Hell yes. I'm so nervous. Like this is, this is big boy stuff. I need to really focus in adult <laughs> so that I can like achieve my goals and like obviously prayer too. And love and support from you guys. You know, I could really use your, you know, thoughts and prayers, you know, to just help me along my journey because I just really want to just make things happen for myself. I really just want to be like independently successful because at the end of the day, I really feel like, you know, no one's really going to have me like I'm going to have me. So I'm going to go off camera and rinse the rest of this cleanser off and then we're gonna come back and you know put a mask on and then after that tone and do all the rest of the steps and answer more of your questions okay so now we're going to exfoliate we're gonna go in with the harmony mask from key soul care I'm really excited to use this again it just feels so soft on my skin okay first question what are your thoughts about interracial dating um there's nothing wrong with it um I do find that there's a problem with interracial dating if it's like fetishized so like, if you like light-skinned women, just say that. But don't put down dark-skinned women in the same breath. Don't say, oh, dark-skinned women are ugly, dark-skinned this, dark-skinned that. There's a difference between having a preference and then just being straight up just prejudiced. I don't really see myself like dating outside of my race, like at least not seriously, because I just like the idea of black love. Even if I were to like try to seriously date someone white, there's still gonna be a slight disconnect because culturally we're different. As far as like sexual attraction, I don't discriminate, but as far is like dating and being in a committed relationship, I would prefer to be with someone who is black. By the way, if you guys notice, I'm applying this mask to half of my face because I'm gonna pose for a thumbnail and there's like a specific way like how I want this to look, so. Next question, have you ever been depressed? If so, how did you keep yourself from going back? So, you know, while we were on the subject of talking about growing up in a single parent household, that was depressing. When my parents divorced, I didn't know what to do with myself. I took all my anger out all on my mom and I apologize for that, you know. She knows, we've we've had this discussion. I was 13 when my parents divorced and you know, my, my world turned upside the hell down. Somehow I found ways to blame my mom and just like take my anger out on her and just like, I wanna be with my dad, I wanna be with my dad, I wanna be with my dad. And I, I don't know, I was just, I was really, really, really depressed. That was also during my emo phase where I was like wearing all black and like listening to like Ashley Simpson and like, like all, like 2000s alternative pop rock like pink, like, don't let me get me. I'm my own worst enemy. And I was on Tumblr. Like my mom wouldn't even let me have social media. Like I had downloaded a Twitter. She, ca she caught that quick, man. She caught that quick. She said, you better delete that shit. She was just not having it. The only thing that she would allow me to have, and she really didn't even like allow me to really have it. She just sort of tolerated it was Tumblr. That was it because it's just scrolling. You're just scrolling, looking at pictures of someone's vacation. I moved out of my mom's house when I was 17 to go live with my dad. 
I feel like that was a pinnacle changing point in my life to where like I was having my freedom in a sense and I was able to like do things that I wanted to do finally make my own friends even though I struggled with that and how I keep myself from going back that's something that I had to learn like in my 20s I keep myself in a positive mindset just by practicing little healthy mental habits daily for an example if you guys didn't see my Amazon haul um, I'll also link that above in a card or somewhere but I bought a guided journal called let that shit go I actually just bought it for my friend today and I get really in-depth and personal in my guided journal because you know whatever the prompt is that's like your opportunity to really be like honest with yourself you know nobody else is gonna read that except for you obviously shadow work and self-reflection is literally just self-improvement like you're holding yourself accountable to maybe things that you don't know you're doing wrong or like things that you feel like you can help yourself get out of and I feel like keeping myself out of a depressive state is really important three turn-ons three turn-offs okay I like this question let me talk about my turn-offs first because those are very easy I cannot stand being asked for money by anybody especially for men I cannot stand when people ask me for money. It actually really makes my blood boil. There's this guy um, that I was actually, you know, kind of cool with, especially through high school and stuff and post high school. There was a time period where he just kept asking me for money. $20 here, $5 here, 10 like, and I think I gave him money probably like three or four occasions. I re I've really lost count, I really can't remember. We used to be like really tight, we used to be really cool, but like, he doesn't talk to me like that anymore and he's only hitting me up to be a bank account to him. Like, I'm the bank, like, I, like I'm Wells Fargo, like, I'm Wachovia, like, um, get a job, own a business. It was just very odd, and I kind of started to feel a little disrespected. Like, I'm not your sugar daddy, especially when I started, like, getting more into social media. A lot of people started assuming that, like, oh, you have money, and it's only because, like, I present myself very well, and I carry myself very well, and I care about my appearance, and that equates to money, evidently. That got really annoying because, like, I kind of felt like people felt entitled to my funds. Being asked for money is a huge turnoff that makes me soft um another huge turnoff is lying i cannot stand a liar oh i hate liars so much especially when niggas lie oh my fucking god oh i can't stand when a man lies to me because it makes me really just want to go maim me and slap him like because like i'm such a truthful person like i'll tell you the truth even if like the truth hurts even if i did something wrong and you would think that like that warrants me to lie so that i don't get in trouble for it i'm still gonna tell you the truth i don't care if i get in trouble for it. I don't care. I have no problem with owning up to whatever I did, even if it's wrong. I have no problem taking accountability. I don't mind being the villain in anyone's story. Another turn off for me is not keeping up with yourself and not like taking care of yourself, like your hygiene, if you can't dress, not presenting yourself well. I feel like that's a basic thing. I don't think that's shallow at all. Like, you know, you gotta match me. You know, I, I carry myself very well. I try. I'm, I'm high maintenance as hell. I'm not even gonna hold you, chief. We owe it to each other to present our best version of ourselves that we possibly can. If you're out here with dirty nails, wearing two different shades of red, you know, not showering, since we're on the subject of turn-ons too, that's a turn-on when a guy can dress, whoo, yes. If you, if you got a good taste in like clothes and fashion, you're number one in my book. I also want you to be comfortable with your finances. Like, I don't wanna be with anybody that's like, you know, you know, pinching pennies. Okay, so my love languages are receiving gifts, acts of service, and words of affirmation. So if you're able to do any one of those three, preferably all of them that's another turn on a big one for me is like the acts of service i'm on the go all the time like if i'm not working i'm still working if i'm not doing youtube i'm at my nine to five if i'm not at my nine to five or not doing youtube i'm still running errands i'm still like there's so many things that i do on a daily basis that it can get overwhelming sometimes so if you could clean my bathroom you know for me before i get home from work oh my gosh we can get married or if you freaking like buy me my favorite dairy-free ice cream after a very long stressful day for me just to make me feel better we're gonna get married uh ciao wear your fine ass friends nowadays eyes emojis trade sent that um I i'm assuming the fine ass friends he's referring to are the trick ass bitches that i cut off that's another turn off when like men that i've talk to in the past talk to me about my friends and I'm not even friends with them go away but I was in a two girlfriend group you know we were really tight one of them I've known since I was five years old she did something that really hurt me I'm gonna talk about it because I want to know if any of you have ever experienced this situation or have ever been in something similar so my supposed to be best friend 
lied to me and tricked me into talking to someone that she was already talking to just to see if he was gay. And I don't even think she knows that like I came to that conclusion because like I really didn't come to that conclusion until way after the fact. This was like a layered problem before I even knew about it. So to briefly explain to you guys like the tea, right? Cause this is some tea. So, you know, I'm scrolling through Twitter one day, you know, it's just scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. And I see this fine ass light skinned nigga. I go to his page and I'm like, ooh, who's this? And it's like followed by, you know, my best friend and another girl. And so I, I screenshot his Twitter and I text my best friend. I'm like, yo, who's this? And she said, I have no idea who he is. We just follow each other. That's it. And I was like, oh, okay, you know, like he's fine. Like, I think I'm gonna follow him. I think I'm gonna like, you know, try to shoot my shot. You know, he's my type. And she's like, oh, go for it. You know, oh, yes, yes. Like, yeah, follow him, go for it. And um, so I did, I followed him and he followed me back. I was shocked a little bit. I was like, yo, he followed me back. So then, you know, I was feeling myself. So I found his Instagram, followed his Instagram. He followed me back on Instagram. So I'm like, oh, oh, we're getting somewhere. And he was a Scorpio too. So like, I had to be very careful because you know how they are. They're very secretive, especially Scorpio men. Scorpios, they can, they can be tricky. And I'm not saying, I'm not saying that they lie. I'm not saying that, but you just gotta watch them. I think I LMFAO'd my way into his DMs to try to initiate a conversation. I think we talked about like astrology or something like that. I don't know, whatever. You know, I'm relaying all this information to my best friend and I'm just like, yo, we're DMing, we're doing this and we're getting to know each other a little bit more. And then she comes out about two weeks later and she's like, I have to be honest, him and I are talking and we've been talking. Excuse me. Excuse me. I was very baffled. From the get-go, I asked you who he was and you lied to me and said you didn't know who he was when you've been talking to him that entire time. And you told me to talk to him. So at, at that moment, it didn't really click to me because she spun it in a way that was like, oh, I didn't want to deny you the opportunity to get to know somebody. You know, she she dressed it up really nice and my dumb ass ate it up. She was like, yeah, no, I just didn't want to like deny you the opportunity to get to know him because he's a really nice person. And if he works for you, then I would have loved for you to have that opportunity. Whatever bullshit she came up with. And I was like, oh okay you know but like since you've been talking to him first I'm just gonna take a step back and let you continue talking to him just forget all about it you know I guess like a couple days later after that she texts me again she's like hey you know things between me and him fell off you're more than welcome to start talking to him again if you want I don't care either way so fast forward a couple days after that we're DMing again the opportunity presented itself I shot my shot and he took the bait he actually likes me back like he actually is like a little bi. I text my friend, I was just like, hey, you know, like this is what's going on. I could tell immediately she did not like that. It's almost as if she was like angry at the fact that like her suspicions were true. He's into men. The whole point of her lying to me about him was so that she can use me to see if he was into other men. You know, long story short, the guy blocked me. I got a lot of clarity on the matter. I don't regret her not being my life, not one bit. At first I was kind of concerned just because you've known somebody for a long time doesn't mean that they should continue being in your life if they are toxic. So before I take this mask off, I'm gonna exfoliate my lips with this Agave Lip Scrub from Bite Beauty. This is actually really exfoliating because they say that you're really not supposed to use this more than two times a week because it deeply exfoliates your lips. I'm also gonna use this lip scrubber, this silicone lip scrubber from Daily Concepts. This is probably one of the best inventions ever because I don't like using my fingers to exfoliate my lips. It's also very sanitary because it's silicone, so there's no bacteria that's gonna be built up on it, and you can easily wash it off um, by rinsing it off in the sink. Okay, so now I'm gonna go rinse off my face and the scrub from my lips and then we can continue on with the questions. Okay, so off camera I washed the mask off and now we're going to tone. We're gonna use the Ren Clean Skincare Ready Steady Glow Daily AHA Tonic. This is one of my favorite products that I've tried so far this year. I kind of just picked this up in Sephora because I read the description and I read the ingredients. I was like, okay, this is something that I wanna try. This is 
really, really good. I like using it as an aftershave or if I do like deep facials to myself and it leaves my skin very glowy in the morning. You actually feel the tingly sensation on your skin and that's the alpha hydroxy acids working deeply into your skin to create cell turnover. I highly encourage you guys to go out and buy this and try it out for yourselves. It has truly transformed the way that I do like my nighttime skincare routine. Next question, how did you deal with other people's perceptions of your sexuality? Very, 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 very good question. To be quite honest, I used to really care a lot what people thought about me. Like I used to really care. I don't anymore. Like to a degree, like of course I'm susceptible and open to constructive criticism, but I have been put in certain situations where like perceptions of my sexuality did hurt me. And also there was a recent situation that I haven't really talked about. I was helping this guy with his YouTube channel. I wouldn't consider him to be a friend. I would consider him to be an acquaintance. You know, this was somebody that I really never thought in a million years I would even be talking to, to be quite honest. This guy that I kind of grew up around in my area, he became like TikTok famous. I'll be honest, he is conventionally attractive. He got a lot of attention on TikTok. And so he wanted to create a YouTube channel. And so he wanted some help from me with his YouTube channel. So he paid me to edit two videos for him. And when I tell you guys, I literally did everything. I literally did everything. I used my Final Cut Pro program. I used my music. I used my apps to make his thumbnail. Like I did everything. So, you know, he's posting his videos or whatnot and I'm giving him a little bit of some tips and not completely putting him on. Why am I doing this? Because that nigga was fine and I'm stupid. Like I I'm telling you guys, I'm, I'm dumb sometimes. I may come off as really intelligent and smart, but like when it comes to men, like sometimes I make kind of the dumbest decisions. I'll be honest, but I learned a lot from them and I just strive to do better. It wasn't until one day we're out having lunch and I do like a little boomerang because he asked me like, how do you make your stories look so good? Like your Instagram stories. And so I was like, okay, here, I'll show you. So he's sitting across from me, we're having lunch and I do a boomerang of him. I showed him what the boomerang looked like and I did little edits and stuff. I tagged him in it and I posted it because I was like, why not? You know, it looks good. We're two friends having lunch. He reposts it to his story and I kid you not, when we're done hanging out, he deletes it. Something in me just knew that like, okay, like people are talking shit. People were swiping up on his story and I have no idea what exactly they were saying, but you get the idea because I checked my story analytics and I saw that people were sharing that story that I posted him in. And he came at me really aggressive and hard and was like, why would you even post that in the first place? You know, what we have is strictly business and ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. And I was just like, oh my gosh, like this is a completely like different person than the guy that I've been spending like eight hours plus with for the past like three weeks. Very, very weird. It really did hurt my feelings because like, first of all, you didn't have a problem with the story. You reposted it onto yours. If you had a problem with it, you would have told me like literally right then and there. You only had a problem with it because other people swiped up and saw you having lunch with a gay dude and was like, yo, like what the fuck is this? You know, I completely get it. Just say that, you know, just say that. Like if you are secretly homophobic, just say that. And so, you know, I really didn't like stick it to him in our text message thread like I really should have. I kind of just left that to God. We haven't spoken since, but yeah, that's just another example of how just like people perceive me and my sexuality and how like it's such a problem to them. Next, I'm gonna use the black tea kombucha essence from Fresh. The next thing I'm gonna go in with is this Flavo C Pure Vitamin C capsule from Istin. I was gifted this product as well as this Kaox eye cream from them. They are a really like new innovative brand coming up right now. If you're familiar with one of their products, is their SPF probably. I have a sample of that in front of me. It's the Ultralight Emotion Broad Spectrum SPF 50. I use this during the day. This was in Pharrell's Vogue video for his skincare routine. It really has a lot of like anti-aging reverse effects. Their product have a lot of science behind them and they're really really good so I'm gonna be doing like a little first impressions of these two products today because I haven't tried anything I'm gonna be doing a video where I'm gonna be getting more in-depth details about you know the ingredients and the science behind this okay so commencing on is it okay to check phones defined okay hear me out and some of you may not agree with this but like I don't necessarily agree that like if you go through somebody's phone you don't trust them me I'm a Virgo I'm naturally a curious person like I just love learning. <laughs> so like if I've never gone through your phone before, I'm gonna be like, hmm, I wonder 
what he has in there. Like, I've just never looked at his phone before. I'm not necessarily looking for anything bad. I just want to look at it. It's, you know, it's just like going to a store you've never been in. Like, I wonder what kind of clothes they have. I might hate those clothes or I might love those clothes. Th th I mean, that's just how I look at it. I think the key word in this question is the word check. Don't be checking somebody's phone. That is not trusting somebody. If you feel like you have to check someone's phone, you don't trust them. Me, I'm, I just want to look. That's it. I'm window shopping. I may or may not buy anything. What is a deal breaker for you? Trust. While we're on the subject of trust, <laughs> about going through people's phones and stuff, um, if you don't trust me or if I can't trust you, that's the number one deal breaker because I actually need trust to even be sexually attracted to you. I have yet to kind of experience that connection with anyone. Trust is the number one deal breaker for me, for sure. Telling me no, that is a deal breaker. I ask you to like build a dresser for me and you tell me no, do it yourself. The door, like there's the door. Are you kidding me? No, like that. that is your job. Building a desk is your job. I can't do that. When I built my filming desk, do you know how long this took me, you guys? This took me two weeks. If I had a man, it'd be done in two hours. And if I'm acting like a baby or a brat, so be it. So if I'm acting like a baby or a brat, so be it. There, there's just certain things that like I require for a man to do and telling me no is not one of them. Don't you dare tell me no. Uh, somebody asked me how come after a miscarriage the relationship changes. Pumpkin, I've never experienced that. I can't really speak on that, I'm sorry. I hope that's not something that you've gone through. If so, you know, I am praying for you. One thing that I started doing, I started putting eye cream on my lips. Did you guys know that the skin on your eyes and the skin on your lips are actually pretty similar? So I like to put eye cream now on my lips. Your lips will age too. Your lips will get, you know, crusty and old looking and, you know, cracking looking if you don't take care of them. So I'm actually gonna take a little bit of this eye cream underneath my eyes, take some across my lip. And the last product that we're gonna use is this Skin Transformation Cream from Key Soul Care. I'm just gonna take a little scoop of that. And the last product that we're gonna use tonight is the Ormetic Skin Sheer Pink Lip Enhancement from Image. All right, that concludes all the questions for tonight, guys. Thank you guys for sending me all those. I felt like I was able to really be personal with you guys. Let me know if you want more videos like this in the future. Comment down below what you thought of today's video. Let me know what you would like to see in the future as well. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like this video, and turn on my post notifications so you can be notified of all of my future videos. And also, don't forget to follow me on all of my social media that will be linked below. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.